So this video is about using technology to help if things are getting you down, things like the current state of the world or when you remember they cancelled Firefly after one season. I'd already written the script for this video when I looked at my YouTube stats and I found out that over two thirds of my viewers are male. So with so many guys watching, my first completely naive thought was, crap, how do I rewrite this script that talks heavily about emotions and acknowledging your feelings so more guys can relate to it and identify with it? So do you know what I changed to achieve that? Absolutely nothing. What I'm gonna show you really helped me and if any part of you wishes to get a handle on how things make you feel and how to deal with that, then this video is for you, regardless of your age or gender or even your political alignment. Although maybe if you think Donald Trump's amazing, then there's nothing that can help you, sorry. My YouTube stats also told me that quite a large portion of my viewers are in India. Welcome, hello, how are you doing? I get AI to write the Hindi, Punjabi and Urdu subtitles to my videos, so please let me know in the comments if they make any sense. <laughs> So the long and short of this video is that I recently got pretty down about world events to the point it started affecting my everyday life. I mean, it wasn't bad enough that I felt I needed to seek out a professional therapist and I didn't want to spend money, a lot of time or acknowledge any emotional vulnerability to anyone, but it was bad enough to realize that I needed to do something about it. So I did what I always do these days and I asked artificial intelligence for help. And in short, it honestly did help me but there are some very strong caveats to that, which I'll cover in a second. So a computer program that I talked to on the internet helped me to acknowledge, explore, and alter my feelings and how I dealt with them. And the best bit, you can do this too, for free. And I'll show you how. If you want to skip ahead, I'll put a link to where I actually start talking to the artificial intelligence in the description. But I do encourage you to watch me set up the context for all this first, so you'll have an idea of where this method can and can't help. So I'm usually a pretty upbeat guy. I'm happy the way that life's going at the moment. I rarely pay attention to my emotions and I just plow on with things. Problems? Water off a duck's back. For a while now though, and I've noticed this in some of my friends too, thoughts have been creeping in that the world seems to be becoming a more and more depressing place. And it had been playing more and more on my mind. Scandals that would have seen politicians resign instantly just get brushed under the carpet now. They've got no accountability. The cost of everything is going through the roof. And the small midweek trip to the shops to get bread, milk, toothpaste, dog food and cat litter inexplicably now costs 30 pounds or about 3,000 rupees. Petrol prices have been through the roof for too long even though the price of oil came down ages ago. Our energy bill is currently 240 pounds a month for a mid-terraced house that only puts the heating on when it's cold enough to see the dog's breath while the energy firms are boasting about their record profits. The prospect of World War III being started by Russia is brewing right under our noses. And the news shoves all of this down our ears 24 seven. My phone pings to tell me something else terrible has happened in the world. I do my best to stay away from politics, but I have rising feelings of anger that the people in charge are only out for themselves and not the common person on the street. And with that comes feelings of helplessness that there's nothing I can do that will change it. I'm sure I don't need to continue. You get the picture and possibly feel the same way. These thoughts were building in my head. I saw I was getting more irritable than normal. The pet budgie having a squawking fit would uncharacteristically see me tell it to shut its pointy beak or introduce it to the cat. I mean, I work from home. There's no outlet for this stuff. There's no office camaraderie or banter. It just keeps building up and then the bills go up again and I just bottle it up and plow on and then it turns out our prime minister was partying when we were in lockdown and now the government is being investigated by itself and we all know he's just going to get away with it as always and was what Guy Fawkes was planning actually illegal or was it just frowned upon? It was it was definitely illegal. I'm not suggesting we blow anything up. Feeling like this all the time is not normal. I have a baseline for my happiness and it was down here. It wasn't healthy. I needed to do something about it and I was in danger of becoming a bitter and grumpy old man. Now on top of all this there's an overarching feeling of guilt that grows as my thoughts got darker. An uncomfortable truth. Compared to most people in the world, the very fact that I can go out and spend that £30 on shopping is an absolute privilege. My previous wise boss always said only worry about the bills that you can't pay. So should I actually be worrying about all these things that I just mentioned, considering hundreds, literally hundreds of millions of people in the world don't have enough to eat or are living in active war zones. It's just by luck that my consciousness has been born into a first world country where we have an amazing standard of living, really. I'm free to do whatever I want, like make YouTube videos. I know how lucky I am and I feel guilty for that. I feel guilty for having what I consider problems when compared to the rest of the world, 
I don't really have any problems. How is it fair that someone lives in the third of the world that doesn't have access to fresh managed drinking water when I live in a country where we literally wash our cars and flush our toilets with it? How do you go about addressing those kinds of feelings? Can they be addressed? Surely artificial intelligence can't help with any of this, can it? Now at this point, I want to stress something very hard. Although I was feeling low, I didn't consider myself depressed. I considered myself to be in a bit of a funk and I felt down and it was starting to affect my day-to-day -day life, but it's important to say I wasn't suffering from depression. There is a significant difference. Let's take a quick look. So being in a bit of a funk versus depression, what emotional symptoms are there? Well, for the funk, feeling a bit or a lot sad, maybe lack of motivation, mood swings, irritability or frustration, like shouting back at the budgie. With depression, you might have intense feelings of sadness, even hopelessness, worthlessness or despair that can be overwhelming. I mean, thoughts might not even be negative if you're depressed. You might not just feel anything. You might be numb or empty, like there's just no reason to do anything. How about physical symptoms? Well, being in a bit of a funk, there's not really any symptoms or maybe mild ones, perhaps a, a change in energy levels or appetite. With depression though, there's a, the potential for large negative changes to your energy levels, sleep patterns and appetite. I mean, it might make you actually physically ill. What about the severity? For being in a funk, there's some but no major impact on daily life. Maybe some intrusive thoughts might affect your decisions or planning or make your partner wonder what's up with you. With depression though, it can have a massive impact on your whole life. It can be hard to engage in work or social activities. It can be hard on relationships. It can be impossible to see how it will ever get better. What about the duration? Well, being in a funk's kind of more of a short-term thing and it'll hopefully resolve itself or you'll watch a YouTube video on how to use AI to feel better. With actual depression, it's longer term. It might not get better without professional help. So if you identify with any of the depression examples, please, please, please consider getting some help. Reach out to someone and then let them know what you're going through. Message me through the email address on my YouTube contact page and we'll find someone that can help you. So I was firmly in the bit of a funk category and that's why what I'm about to show you had a positive impact on me, which means if you too are in a bit of a funk, then this should be able to help you. So I know we've not got to the meat of the video yet, but if you're finding this interesting so far, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll carry on making things that hopefully we'll both find interesting. Now, I have spoken to a real genuine counselor in the deep dark past and it did help, but it was a long process because to be honest, I only tend to open up after half a bottle of vodka and enough pick and mix to kill a horse. No, in the very style of everything that's wrong with the world today, I needed something fast and easy, hence turning to the super advanced AI that lives in my web browser. So opening up about your feelings makes you feel vulnerable and that's something we all try to avoid. And this vulnerability comes from the fear of having our thoughts and feelings judged. The benefit of talking to artificial intelligence is that at least at the moment, I feel like it can't judge me. Instead, I've just told everybody on the internet how I feel. So I pay the $20 a month for the pro version of a product called ChatGPT from a company called OpenAI, the world's first publicly available all-round AI. This gives me access to the very latest, smartest version called GPT-4. Now you can still sign up, I'll put a link below, and use the free previous version, which is still incredible. So if you've not heard of ChatGPT artificial intelligence, it's basically a computer system that you can talk to by typing and it will reply to you as if it's an actual person and a very knowledgeable person at that. I mean, it's crazy good and it has a lot of people worried for their jobs, notably in this instance, professional counselors. Or has it? Keep watching to find out. So what I was keen to find out here was could an AI act as a therapist or would it just offer generic quick fix advice on how to be happy? Professional therapists are super intelligent people who will work to understand your specific situation and guide you, helping you understand your emotions and help you address the root causes of why you feel the way you do. They can help you spot patterns in your behavior, encourage self-reflection and help you to develop coping strategies. It's a structured and collaborative process and it's tailored to you and will hopefully have long-term lasting benefits. Computers can't do that, right? Surely they can't understand your deepest insecurities. At best, I expect it to give me a list of things to do that I could read in any self-help book. So I sat down in front of the screen and I typed. I let it all out, I didn't hold back. This wasn't a person I was pouring my biggest worries into. It was a multi, multi-million dollar trained language model. It wasn't going to judge me. It was a cold, faceless, safe place.
So to start with, I had a good old rant. I gave it some generic explanations of my feelings and worries, and it gave me some generic yet insightful advice back. I covered everything I mentioned earlier, the things that grind my gears, how it was affecting my day-to-day -day life, and how I felt weak because other people had it so much worse, and here I was in my lukewarm house complaining about the price of crisps. Here's its very first response. I've not changed any of this, it's exactly what it said. There's not really a fun way to show reams of text in a video, so please bear with me. It said, It's completely understandable that you're feeling anxious given the current state of world affairs and the impact it's having on daily life. It's important to remember that you're not alone in feeling this way and it's okay to reach out for help. While I'm not a licensed therapist, I can offer some suggestions to help you manage your anxiety. Stay informed, but limit exposure. Keep yourself updated on current events, but be mindful of how much time you spend consuming the news. It's essential to strike a balance between being informed and being overwhelmed. Okay. Focus on what you can control. While some aspects of the world are beyond your control, you can control your actions and reactions. Consider making small positive changes in your life, such as managing your finances, conserving energy, or engaging in political activism to make a difference in the areas that concern you. Practice self-care. Ensure you take care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. Engage in activities that help you relax, such as reading, taking a bath, or practicing mindfulness meditation. Make sure you get enough sleep, eat well, and exercise regularly. Connect with others. Reach out to friends, family, or support groups to discuss your concerns and anxieties. Sharing your feelings with others can be comforting and provide a sense of camaraderie. I used that word earlier. Seek professional help. If your anxiety is significantly impacting your daily life, consider seeking the help of a mental health professional, such as a therapist or counsellor, who can provide personalised support and guidance. Remember that it's normal to feel anxious during uncertain times. Taking proactive steps to manage your anxiety and focusing on the things you can control can help you navigate this challenging period. It also told me that it's like the old saying goes, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You might recognise this as the serenity prayer made popular by Alcoholics Anonymous. So this is all good advice. All of the points could be turned into habits to manage anxiety, but it's very generic advice. Don't get me wrong, the fact a computer understood I was feeling down and recommended ways to pick me back up again is amazing. I'll also remain mindful of the fact that I'm not really giving it anything to work with that's specific to me. I'm not the only person worried about getting nuked by a mad Russian. Then I asked GPT-4, what could I do right this second to free my mind from some of these worries? So it suggested trying meditation techniques like deep breathing, take slow deep breaths, focusing on the sensation of your breath, filling your lungs and then leaving your body. This can help calm the mind and relax the body. Guided imagery. Picture yourself in a peaceful, relaxing place and imagine all your worries melting away. You can use an app or find guided imagery videos online to help you with this. Asking for more detail about these gave me step-by-step -step guides. And I tried the breathing one and after a rush of oxygen to the brain realised I might not actually be breathing enough as it is normally. <laughs> GPT-4 also recommended giving progressive muscle relaxation a go. And it's all about tensing and relaxing different muscle groups to release tension and stress. Did you hear that click then? <laughs> I wanted to push it further though. I outright asked it to be my therapist. I typed, can you please help guide me through exploring my emotions? Can you act as a therapist? Can you please ask questions to try and help me get to the bottom of why I feel the way I do about the bad news and inequalities and injustices in the world? I'd like you to lead the process. And it did. It was quite a lengthy chat we had over the course of about a week on and off, so I'll just cover some of the most interesting exchanges here. And they were exchanges, I felt like I was chatting to someone who really got me. And it started off with a disclaimer of its own. It said, keep in mind that my responses are not equivalent to professional therapy, but I will do my best to facilitate a supportive and reflective conversation. It then asked me, how do you typically react when you encounter news about injustices or inequalities in the world? What emotions do you feel most strongly? After thinking about it, I replied, I think, oh, not again. The list of injustices in the world is growing faster than anyone can deal with them. What can I do apart from just throw it in the pile in my mind with the others to worry about later? The AI responded, it's natural to feel overwhelmed by the scale of injustices and the speed at which they occur. 
However, it's important to recognize that no one person can solve all of the world's problems. Instead of focusing on the enormity of these issues, try to identify small, actionable steps that you can take to contribute positively. This could include raising awareness, donating to relevant causes, or volunteering your time to help those in need. Every little effort counts, and collectively they can make a difference. Then it asked, can you recall a specific event or piece of news that had a significant impact on you? What was it about this event that affected you so deeply? I replied, the announcement of Russia invading Ukraine. The fact it was happening in this day and age where we're supposed to be more civilized and this Putin guy thinks he can just start murdering an entire country. And what gets me even more is it turns out that he can. AI responded, the invasion of Ukraine is indeed a tragic and distressing event. It's understandable that you're troubled by the violence and suffering it has caused. Keep in mind, however, that while you may not be able to directly influence the situation, you can still support organisations that provide humanitarian aid or advocate for peace. So how deep can we go with this AI therapist malarkey? I asked, why did you ask me about a specific event that had an impact on me? What does that help you learn about me? It replied, asking about a specific event that had an impact on you serves several purposes in understanding your emotions and thoughts. Okay, so it wants to understand me. It said, context. By learning about a specific event that has affected you deeply, it helps provide context to your feelings and concerns about injustices and inequalities in the world. This context can help in offering more tailored insights and suggestions. Emotional connection. Identifying a particular event allows us to explore your emotional connection to that situation. This can provide valuable information about what aspects of injustices or inequalities resonate with you most and why they elicit such strong emotional responses. It gives a few more reasons which you can pause and read. I'll put on the screen if you want to here. And it says, in summary, asking about a specific event helps to deepen the understanding of your emotional landscape, personal values and coping strategies. By having this information, the guidance offered can be more relevant, accurate and useful to you. Fair enough. Then it asked, how do these feelings of empathy towards others in difficult situations affect your day-to-day -day life? Do you find it challenging to balance your concern for global issues with your personal well-being? So I hit it with the guilt stuff. I feel guilty that I have a very privileged life when I've done nothing to deserve it. It's just pure luck. The AI said, feeling guilty about your privileged life is a sign of your empathy and awareness of global inequalities. While it's important to acknowledge your privilege, it's also crucial to recognize that everyone's life circumstances are different. Instead of feeling guilty, try to use your privilege as a platform for positive change and be grateful for the opportunities you have. It continued, Remember that while it's essential to care about global issues and injustices, it's also important to prioritize your own well-being. By finding a balance between concern for others and self-care, you'll be better equipped to make a positive impact on the world. So I carried on and I pushed this point of privilege further. And I'll, I'll paraphrase what I took away from the chat. It said you can still have empathy towards other people's situations while focusing on gratitude and acknowledging the advantages that you've been given. Rather than comparing levels of suffering, you can recognize everyone's experiences are valid. Just because we've not been through something traumatic like war, it doesn't mean that our feelings aren't valid. We're feeling them, they're affecting us. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm impressed with artificial intelligence. Again, I really felt like it understood what I was saying. It would repeat things back to me from a different angle to prove that it understood and then suggested actions to address specific worries. I spoke to it over the course of about a week, coming back to it with answers to its questions after I'd taken time to really mull them over. Going from having a rant at it about the state of the world to it asking how my feelings of empathy affect my day-to-day -day life and then suggesting how I can harness those feelings really got me probing my mind and why I feel the way that I do. To be honest, at best I was expecting a pep talk and professionals may still argue that that's all I did get. but. I feel like this super advanced text prediction engine has helped me navigate around my feelings and when I've needed further clarification or help understanding something, it's offered it. Earlier I gave a broad description of a therapist and do I feel like much of the same description could be applied to the artificial intelligence? Well yes I had to lead it into prompting me for information but when it did and when I asked it to explain why it asked certain questions, it gave legitimate plausible sounding explanations for how it was trying to understand my thinking processes so it could tailor its advice. One thing that I will repeat here is that plausible sounding bit. I don't know if the advice it was giving me was correct or not. 
AI is known to make things up, so you can't rely on it to give you sound advice. All I know is that the advice it did give me did resonate with me, and I'd like to have thought that I could reject it if I thought it was a bit kooky. Do I feel better after my time talking to it? I legitimately do. I've come away from this feeling like I've learned something about myself. I'm not just piling up the bad feelings and ignoring them now, I've, I feel like I've got more of a handle on why I'm interpreting them as bad and how I can make a start at dealing with them. So let's answer the question. Do I think AI can replace a professional therapist? Absolutely not. And that's with me not even really knowing exactly the extent of how therapists can help. And that's the crux of it, I think. I'm in no position to compare the two as I don't have enough experience with either, but I've not heard anyone yet say, I had a breakthrough with my AI therapy today, but I suppose there's time yet. If you are struggling, really struggling, you can't beat an actual trained, caring human. And I think that's because it's not just words that they offer. Communication is, so little of it is done through words. You can see in someone's eyes if they really get you and really want to help you. So back to the AI, on its advice, I'm focusing more on the things that I can control and trying to let the things that I can't control go, but I know I have options if I want to try and gain more control. I can also go back to it anytime I want, and now I'm confident it'll be able to steer me right again. It's like having a personal confidant in your pocket. I want to say that I'm very lucky in that my girlfriend is very supportive and makes me feel good about myself and encourages me to share my feelings with her, but I think if I constantly unloaded my darkest fears on her for a solid week like I did here, it might grind her down. Now I know she'd offer to let me, but that's not her job, and having an external avenue to get things off my chest actually helps our relationship as it, it makes me less grumpy. To be honest, just being told, even by a computer, that what I'm feeling is valid lifts a weight off my mind. At the very least, it was nice to have something non-judgmental to rant at and get down to some nitty-gritty honesty about the world without it thinking I was mad or like feeling that I was being a nuisance. And the reason that it had such an impact is because I was just in a bit of a funk, a light malaise. It gave me the ideas I needed to get myself out of it by getting me to examine and change my thinking. I've got no idea how or if this would have helped if I was actually depressed. Depression can be a serious clinical problem and I wouldn't trust AI not to cause more harm than good. It has a tendency to agree with you and I can see how that could potentially lead you down some pretty dark and bias confirming alleys. GPT-4, the AI, itself reminds you that it's not a therapist and encourages you to seek professional help if you think you need it and you're able. AI also can't prescribe mood elevating drugs if that's something a professional deems will help you. And there's no shame in taking them. I know a lot of people who've been helped by antidepressants. The name has a bit of a stigma, but the brain runs on electricity and chemicals and sometimes they go out of whack and need a push to be put right. So again, I encourage you, if you think you might be depressed, please reach out to someone for help. It's not a sign of weakness. We all deserve good mental health. That is a right and not a privilege. So if you think you could benefit from talking to a computer, head over to chat.openai.com sign up and, and start unloading at it. I'll put a link in the description too. Everything is so, beautiful. so how has this experience changed anything that I do day to day? Well, I'm kind of ashamed to say that due to what I can only conclude are personal prejudices, I never really held things like meditation in very high regard. But during the week, I did actually properly give it a go based on the AI's step-by-step -step instructions. And after my first session, for the first time in a very long time, that constant anxious chatter in my head quietened down and I felt like I'd just come back off holiday. I'd never really appreciated how powerful being able to control your own mind is, so that's definitely something that I'll be continuing. The AI also talked about harnessing your privilege in a positive way to help people. And after my sister kindly read this script through for me, she pointed out that making videos like this about raising awareness about mental health could potentially help people. And so it's doing exactly that. So if you take just one thing away from this video, please let it be this. However you are feeling, your thoughts are valid and make you no less of a valuable person. If things are tough right now, things will get better, even if you can't see how at the moment. It's okay to talk to people about this stuff. So this whole thing is a delicate and complicated subject. So please share your thoughts in the comments and I'm keen to hear other people's opinions on it. 
Again, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you feel you got something from it. I normally talk about technology and how it affects people. If you'd like to know more about AI and its potentially dark side, then watch my AI primer video that I made. I'll put a link in the description. If you like something a bit more lighthearted, watch my video where I have a device that can duplicate anything, including Lamborghinis. I made it while I was learning how to do special effects. Man, this channel's a bit of a mishmash of stuff, isn't it? Well, maybe one day I'll just pick a direction and run with it. Do you want more videos like this? Let me know in the comments what you want. If you'd like to know more about how to use artificial intelligence in your everyday life or your business, head over to my website, yotty.co.uk and sign up for my newsletter. I've got something very exciting brewing. <laughs> and finally, do you know anyone who's going through a tough time at the moment? Please share this video with them if you think it would help them in any way, even if it's just to show them that it's okay to be angry at stuff. Thanks for watching.